Hello! We have made it to Advent. This means that the Christmas tunes are on, decorations are going up and presents are busily being squirrelled away. This year in my house, our six-year-old gave us a countdown to Advent. The excitement is growing, but what is it growing for? The word La Advent in Latin means coming. And so in the church, Advent is meant to be the expectation of and preparation for the coming of Jesus. But it can, it can be easy to think of it as just the birth of a cute little baby. Now, there's a spoiler alert here. Don't want to ruin anyone's Christmas but Jesus has already been born as a baby. I remember as a child realising that it wasn't actually a new thing that happened every year. The actual event happened once, over 2000 years ago. So if we don't need to be preparing for the birth of a baby, why on earth do we still need Advent? What is it that we are meant to be expectant of and preparing for? Nothing epitomises the expectation of Advent quite like the prophets. And that is what the second candle of Advent reminds us of. It represents the peace that the prophets said would come with the Messiah. In the Old Testament, there are many prophecies about the Messiah, foretelling many events that would take place during his lifetime. But the significance of these prophecies is in who they said was coming. A Messiah, a saviour, a deliverer. But what exactly was the promise of the Messiah spoken about by the prophets? Messiah means anointed one and was the person that the Jews believed would bring peace and drive away their oppressors. Isaiah, who prophesied the Messiah more than any other prophet, called him the Prince of Peace and declared that his government and its peace would never end. In fact, the overarching prophecy about the Messiah is this, that he would bring true shalom or peace to all of creation. He would make it complete. He would bring wholeness and he would restore all that has been lost. So the Messiah is meant to restore, but if he's meant to do that, we first need to understand what he's restoring it to. So we're going to start by looking at the story of creation. In Genesis 1, God created the world. He looked at everything he'd made and he said it was very good. Genesis 1 verse 27 says this about the creation of man and woman. God created human beings in his own image. So if we are made in the image of God, this means that he planted within us and we carry the essence of God, his core, his heart. And then God gave us, mankind, a command. He said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky and all the animals that scurry along the ground. So God told us to do two things. First of all, to be fruitful and multiply. This is about carrying God with us wherever we go and living with his heart and in his way. Secondly, it was to reign over the earth, or in other words, to bring shalom to the entire creation, to bring peace. I wonder if you've ever encountered a place where this peace still reigns. During the first lockdown, my family went for a walk each day 
and we went bright and early at 9am when it felt like the rest of the world hadn't quite woken up and made outdoors yet. So it was always nice and quiet. One of our favourite places to go was Itchin Valley Country Park. And I remember several mornings where we would turn up and the top field was completely empty. We'd get out of the car, my children would run off across the field like lunatics, my husband would walk calmly behind them, and for a minute I would just stand and soak in the silence and the stillness and the beauty of the mist on the grass or the sun above the treetops, the birds singing their morning call, it would just soak in. Do you know, the world calls this the healing power of nature, but it isn't. It's creation in small pockets around us, revealing shalom. And just for a few moments each morning, my soul would drink in the peace. And just for a moment each morning, the stress of COVID and lockdown and homeschooling would all disappear and everything felt whole. It isn't only nature that can reflect true peace. When I spent time in Mozambique, I was staying in a base, which was a children's centre, a food kitchen, a church, and also a school of ministries. When you walked onto the base, you felt the tangible presence of God. Complete peace. I, I can't describe it. I've not seen it anywhere else. And outside the walls of the base were all the problems that and struggles that all of our societies face. And yet one step inside was completely different. Why? Because the people who live on that base, which is about 100 in all, prioritise the wholesome, restorative presence of God. And therefore it reigned over the whole base. Perfect shalom. I remember before leaving to come home, I lingered there as long as I could, just drinking in that presence, that peace because the whole atmosphere felt so whole. <clears throat> True peace is possible. We've encountered pockets of it, but it didn't all stay the same in Eden. It went quite wrong. The Bible tells us that after the creation and the command given to Adam and Eve, the serpent tempted them and sin and death entered the world. When this happened, creation stopped flourishing. Biblical shalom was interrupted and lost in the years ahead where mankind fought, turned away from God and lived lives their own way. So what does the creation of man and woman, the commands given to them and death entering the world have to do with Advent and the prophets? everything. In the expectation and preparation of Advent, we find a deeply prophetic act. At Advent, we are declaring that the Messiah, the Saviour, is coming. And that is exactly what the prophets were foretelling throughout the Old Testament. That the one who will restore Biblical shalom, make all of creation whole again, is coming. Throughout the dark years of the Old Testament, where people had turned away from God and were living the, with the consequences, prophets like Isaiah, Ezekiel, and more recently Zechariah and Malachi encouraged the people that God was with them, that he cared deeply, and that one day he would send a deliverer to come and rescue them. Let's look at some of the prophecies in the book of Isaiah and what they say about the Messiah. We find that they are prophesying peace. In chapter 11 verse 4 to 6 it says, 
He will give justice to the poor and make fair decisions for the exploited. He will wear righteousness like a belt and truth like an undergarment. In that day, the wolf and the lamb will live together. The leopard will lie down with the baby goat and a little child will lead them. Isaiah is describing Eden. He's describing restoration and wholeness. He is declaring that the Messiah will bring peace. In chapter 61, this is the passage that Jesus used about himself at the start of his ministry. It's what Jesus declared that he himself had come to do. Let's read the first few verses to see what Isaiah prophesied of the Messiah. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. To bind the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom, release, beauty instead of ashes, joy instead of mourning, praise instead of despair, to restore and renew. What does Isaiah prophesy about Jesus? That he will bring wholeness, make complete and restore creation. That is biblical shalom, peace. Isaiah prophesies that the Messiah will bring peace. That is why it matters that we understand how the story of creation and the fall fits in here. Because the role of the Messiah, as told by the prophets, is to restore creation to the peace that it was created for. Advent is the time to be expectant of this. The peace, the restoration, the wholeness, as promised by the prophets, is coming. But it's not quite here yet. God invites us to partner with him in this. He still created you and me in his image. We carry the image of God and until Jesus physically comes again, we represent him in the world. He never told us to stop being fruitful and multiplying or to stop bringing peace to creation. We still carry the mandate from Genesis 1. We carry the shalom prophesied about by the prophets. He lives in our hearts. I would love to tell you about the Message Trust and what they have been doing in Manchester. In 2000, they organised a citywide youth mission which saw around 10,000 young Christians volunteer on social, environmental and crime reduction projects across Manchester. During the 10 days of the mission, in one particular area that they targeted called Swinton Valley, there were no recorded incidents of crime. None. The police were shocked and they have since reported a sustained reduction in crime levels. People carrying the spirit of God, bringing wholeness, making complete and restoring creation. It's biblical peace and it's so exciting. The message has also 
set up a prison ministry where they have seen hundreds of inmates give their lives to God and be discipled while in prison. However, they kept finding that vulnerable men and women were leaving prison with little or no support, with no job, and in some cases, no safe place to live. And too often, new believers were ending up back in their old criminal lifestyles. And so the churches in Manchester got together with a shared vision that God would bring lasting peace in these people's lives. They acquired a building and they set up an enterprise centre where they could give support and mentoring to those who needed it, with decent housing and a way of providing training and work. People carrying the Spirit of God, bringing wholeness, making complete and restoring creation. It's so good! We too have an active role in bringing peace to where we live. And at this time of year, we are reminded that we have an active role in Advent. The Messiah coming to the world around us involves us. So if Advent is supposed to be a time of preparation, let me ask you today, how you are preparing and participating. Is Advent just about getting ready for a fabulous few days of good food, wonderful presents and time with loved ones? Is this what you'll be preparing for and eagerly awaiting over the remaining 19 days until Christmas Day? And yes, there's your cheeky little Christmas countdown if you needed one today. Or are you preparing your hearts to receive Jesus personally once again? We all become a little stagnant over time, faith dries up a little bit, and Advent can be a good time to remember the peace is for you personally and to stir up those embers in your heart. If that's where you find yourself, what does it look like for you to prepare your heart for the Messiah this Advent? Or can I invite you to participate in bringing peace, recognising that you are made in God's image and you carry his spirit, bringing peace to the world that is in great darkness. Through us, Jesus is coming, bringing wholeness, making complete and restoring creation to what it was intended to be. What does it look like for you to do this? Maybe it's carrying God's image into your family and friends or your workplace. Or maybe it's helping out with Community Cafe or Love Southampton to give a couple of examples. The promise of peace, true shalom, restoration and wholeness finds and finds its fulfilment and completion in the person of Jesus Christ. God himself has come to save, redeem and restore his creation. David Cassidy, who is a church pastor in Tennessee, put it like this at the beginning of Advent this year. What does Advent mean? It means that death, disease, despair, drug addiction, homelessness, murder, hate, war, orphanhood, poverty, hunger, thirst, tears and grief, they have an expiration date. These are not the original intention for the world and they will not see the dawn of the new creation. Thank you, Jesus. The kingdom of God is coming. Advent is not just about remembering that he came as a baby a long time ago. We continue to be reminded by the prophets of the Old Testament that true and promised peace is still coming. 
And so this Advent, we actively expect and prepare for Jesus's kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen.